Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is the second in the Aircraft of the Aces series and in this uh, episode I'm building Airfix's 148 scale Hurricane Mark 1. This is the most recent Airfix kit. They produced one in the 1980s which was a decent uh, kit but this is a bit of an improvement on that. And the boxing I'm using here is actually part of a gift set which uh, contains an Albion refueler and a utility truck, some crew and some ground equipment figures as well. But uh, the kit's available in other forms either as a standard Mark 1 or a tropical version. You can see that Airfix have done quite a detailed job on the cockpit. It replicates Hawker's standard tubular cockpit framework pretty well. So a lot of parts go together to create that. And it fits together quite nicely. The cockpit sits on top of the undercarriage bay, which again is a multi-part construction. The bulkhead here serves to hold the fuselage at the correct width at the wing to fuselage join. So it's important that that goes in. Just drilling out the armour plate behind the pilot's head for the shoulder harness later on. I chose to replace the kit seat with this Edward brass seat which I'm just annealing there and folding up. These seats are very difficult to glue together um, so I'm soldering mine here. Makes for a much stronger assembly. And just to give it a quick clean up. Just been primed there with some automotive primer from a rattle can which does the job pretty well. Uh, on with the interior green now. I actually use Tamiya XF71 which it's fairly close but it's a bit too green. Uh, RAF interior green had a bit more grey in it I think. Uh, but I deal with that by applying a dry brush over the top in a grey green which brings it closer to the proper shade. Doing the undercarriage bay and the rest of the cockpit now with some Mr Hobby super fine silver. This is a very fine grain silver which is nice uh, brushed on. It gives a really smooth effect. Just picking out some of the Details on the sidewall, this is the map pocket. And there are one or two other bits and pieces to pick out as well. Pilot's control yoke, but there's not too much work to do in terms of detail painting. Tamiya lacquers work really well for brush painting, they go on really smoothly, particularly if they're thinned correctly. So that's what I used in this case. The Edward set also contained a replacement instrument panel so I'm just sanding the detail off the Airfix panel and pre-painting the instrument lamin laminations there in black. I've backed the acetates for the dials with some white paint just so they show through. and the acetate goes on first followed by the laminations and you can see that that gives us the effect 
of the glass showing through the panel. Just applying some of the weathering wash, the MIG wash to the inside of the cockpit now, just to pick out some of that detail. And also in the undercarriage bay there's an awful lot of detail to pick out, be ashamed not to just accentuate that a little bit, which this wash does. Also adds a little bit of grime effect as well. You can see now that the assembly forms that really strong box section around the uh, undercarriage bay and provides a spar to give you the correct wing dihedral as well. These are the horizontal stabilizers. For large assemblies like this I prefer to use Tamiya standard bottle cement. The extra thin is no good for assemblies like that. It just dries too quickly. It doesn't allow you to get enough cement onto the surfaces. So the standard cement works a lot better. Doing that dry brushing on the green now just to make it a little bit more correct for RAF interior green. And cleaning up the fuselage mating surfaces just to make sure we get a really good bond. And using the Tamiya bottle standard formula again. So putting plenty of that on allows it to just ooze out of the join, which I don't mind at all. It just makes sure that you've got the whole join covered and if you leave it for long enough it uh, eliminates the risk of any ghost seams appearing in the joins later on in the build. Just attaching the seat harness now and these parts have all been preformed, and that's just to avoid uh, scratching the paintwork on the seat if you try and form the belts afterwards. So they're all done whilst the seat's in the raw, if you like, and then the moulded belts just dropped in later on. So that whole assembly is now going in and it needs to be attached really firmly. I'm clamping it in position. Those spars get the wing into the correct dihedral. Attaching our photo etch seat. It's a big improvement on the Airfix kit part which is very thick. And just dropping those last bits of the harness in. Mustn't forget that instrument panel that fits in really positively, is a really positive location point for the panel. Now Airfix in the instructions have us building the wing entirely so putting the top panels on and this led to all sorts of problems in the build. You can see now that with the wings assembled as per the instructions and trying to join it to the fuselage, I ended up with what is possibly the worst ever wing to fuselage join I've ever seen on a kit. And I tried all sorts of different ways of coming at it but just couldn't get anywhere near And the solution in the end was to actually debond the top wing panel using some liquid cement which loosened the old glue and a hairdryer and gradually that loosened the top panel on the inboard side and that just allowed a bit more spring to appear in the bottom wing and that allowed me to uh, get it into position more or less. You can see it's heavily clamped 
and I had to shim the front of the join up as well. So all in all, um, as I said, one of the worst joins I've ever come across. Particularly for a new kit, it's, uh, it was a big surprise. And took an awful lot of work to tidy up. The rest of the control surfaces and the tail surfaces here went in without any problem. The elevator is one piece and I decided to fit that in a deflected position. The ailerons went in neutral. I find them a bit odd if you deflect ailerons on models. They never look right to me, but uh, they're going in in the neutral position. The rudders are nice fit as well. No problems with these. You could add the wire actuators for the rudder if you wanted to. I decided not to. And they are actually provided in the Edwards set as well, but as I said, I just left them as Airfix provide them. I'm just painting the windscreen, having masked it off, just painting it in some flat black so that shows through after the green goes on later on. And I'm using some Van der Rosten splatter templates here just to create a bit of modulation in the paint finish later on. It's particularly effective on pale underside colours, so this will be sky on one wing. It's less effective on particularly the dark green that goes on this upper surface camouflage. But, uh, it's one of those things that I'm still practicing. Bit of pre-shading as well in the black. with the camouflage now and normally I would use Mr Hobby acrylics but I didn't have the correct colours for this scheme and rather than wait I happened to find some old extra acrylics uh, which uh, I haven't used for a long time now and I was a bit worried that they wouldn't work but I'd forgotten how good extra acrylics paints are. They're uh, really a nice pigment in them, nice and opaque. And they dry very quickly, probably about 15 minutes, something like that, to a nice eggshell type finish. And uh, I like them a lot. I've I don't really remember why I stopped using them. And what I found in this build was that because of the quick drying time, I had absolutely no problem with masking. With the Mr. Hobby acrylics that I've used more recently, which tend to be a, a semi-gloss finish, I've had problems with those in marking when I've masked up. 
So, uh, as I said, these created no trouble at all, and I might use them a bit more often, I think. Now, for the port wing on this scheme, it was uh, picked out in a night black. Uh, and it's always difficult getting black to look interesting, I suppose, on a model. What I've done in this case is use Tamiya's NATO black, which is actually a very dark grey, and applied it fairly thinly. And I followed that up with some patchy pure black around the panel lines uh, just to add a little bit of interest and you can very faintly see some of the uh, pre-shading showing through as well so this is the pure black going on in patches so what I've ended up with is a fairly worn representation of the uh, night black. The RAF in the early part of the war went through all sorts of combinations of camouflage schemes particularly with the underside and in 1941, early 1941 or late 1940, I can't remember exactly when, transitioned to using the black with the sky as in this particular case starting to apply the upper surface scheme now in dark earth and dark green you can see the pre-shade underneath with the dark earth on just getting rid of one or two little spots of uh, dust that had got in the surface there and I've masked off with some blue tack and masking tape just to create a feathered edge the extra acrylics dark green going on really nicely So this is uh, thinned with water, I'd forgotten that you can't thin extra acrylics with uh, Mr Hobby thinners, it just goes to a thick gloop. So water was used here and worked perfectly well. You can see the blue tack and masking tapes coming off without leaving a mark at all on the brown and that's after probably just a day drying time I would have had to leave Mr Hobby acrylic a lot longer than that and even then I think it would still have marked up I get through an awful lot of masking tape as you can see even on a small 148 scale model like this. Mr Rooster has been very insistent today. <laughs> so all the masking's coming off and you can see a lovely eggshell finish on the paint surface there and the demarcation between the two colours is exactly what I was after the blue tack rolls uh, give that effect so the models had a coat of Tamiya X22 gloss varnish 
and I've left that to dry for two days before applying the decals because I'm using, as you've seen there, some Microsol and Microset and that can affect a soft undersurface uh, finish. So with the gloss coat fully hardened it's safe to apply the decals. I'm using the kit decals for the National Insignia and stencils but these uh, for Tux aircraft are from Sky Models and they actually go on pretty well. The problem sometimes with Sky decals is that the uh, sizing is probably sometimes a bit inaccurate and sometimes the colours aren't quite right. The actual squadron codes here are a little bit pale. There should be a slightly darker grey. Uh, but they are a little bit pale in the sky set. But I'm not aware of another set for any of Tuck's aircraft in 148 scale. I might be wrong on that, but I'm not aware of any. So we've got the, uh, what was it, in effect a squadron badge really, the 257 squadron was uh, the Burma squadron in the RAF, which is what that uh, insignia is all about. I'm preparing uh, some of the detail parts now whilst the decals are having some time to dry, so I'll spend a day or so working through all the detail pieces. Some of the parts, such as those undercarriage jacks, are very finely moulded, but the sprue gates are very thick in the kit. It's one area of Airfix kits that isn't really refined enough at the moment. So you need to be very careful removing parts like that from the sprues. You can see that the kit exhausts are not hollow. So I'm just opening the ends out with a brand new X-Acto blade, number 11 blade. The ejectors on the Hurricane weren't round. So uh, you can't just drill them out. So you need to do a little bit of work with a knife or maybe a very fine burr would do the same job. And that just improves the look of them. I'm also going to add a bit of refinement to the undercarriage legs, applying the brake lines there. And a bit of a weathering wash, or an outline wash really, on the tail wheel and some of the other parts. Apart from weathering the parts, it also gives you a border for painting the tail wheel itself. Or the tail tyre, which we'll do in a moment. But you can see it just brings out all that lovely detail actually in the Airfix kit. They've done a good job on the undercarriage, particularly. The wash, the MiG Starship wash, being a brown colour gives an impression of oil and grease as well which is nice on these parts. I did have a set of Edward uh, resin wheels but actually when I got them out they appeared to me to be far too small so I didn't use them, I used the kit pieces in the end. They look a bit more correct to me, at least to my eye. These templates are very handy. They're um, from Premium Hobbies in the UK and they come in about four different sets of varying sizes. This is the large set which goes up to 7.6 millimeters as you can see. Anything beyond that 
you can cut with a circle cutter, an alpha cutter. But these smaller sizes, these are really useful. And obviously you can use them uh, as positive and negative um, masks. The tyres I've painted in uh, black to start with, then the sidewalls in German grey and the treads just misted in with a little bit of dark earth. I'm just cleaning that wash off now. And the outline of that wash on the tyre just, as I said earlier, just helps pick the tyre out in some uh, dark grey. Uh, I'm using the same wash for the rest of the airframe into all the recesses, the panel lines and so on. Just uh, apply it sparingly, no need to splash it all over the place. The uh, work of distributing it comes later with the cotton bud when we start to take it off and work the wash to give us the sort of effect that we want. The Airfix decals which are printed by Cartograph settle down really well into the detail. But uh, one thing that I learned I had to be careful was that they do react very strongly to uh, microsol and I nearly lost one of them uh, by being a bit too overzealous with the microsol so uh, it's just worth checking the reaction out on maybe one of the unused decals in the set before you come to apply them to the model. The roundel on the port wing, you can see they're bordered in yellow. I had to paint the yellow first using a circle template and then applied the standard underwing roundel on top of that. I didn't happen to have a roundel with the yellow border in the decal box, so I had to improvise a little bit. So taking the wash off now with a cotton bud and this has been left to dry the wash for uh, 24 hours so it's actually perfectly dry before I start to remove it and occasionally if you do leave it to dry for that length of time it can be a little bit stubborn to remove but uh, if that's the case, just get a tiny little bit of white spirit on the cotton bud and it'll clean it up. And because it's an enamel wash, this is very forgiving. You can remove it completely if you want, if you're not happy with the effect. Um, and you can also play around with it, so with it on the cotton bud. You can rub it into the panels to create staining as you want to really. See, as I said, you can play around until you're happy with the effect that you've got. I'm just working from front to back and with the wash sort of ingrained into the cotton bud it uh, creates the sort of streaks that you see on airframes I don't go mad with gun staining I think it's often overdone so just a gentle 
uh, wash there with uh, to create those gun stains. Just starting to put the detail parts together now. I've uh, weathered the tail wheel with some earth, a very fine misting of uh, dark earth. And starting to assemble the undercarriage now. And the fit of this is really very precise. Airfix have done a great job with the undercarriage. It's a pretty convincing representation. And it's very sturdy. When, uh, when put together. We've got the retraction jack is moulded integrally with the undercarriage leg itself but we also have this strut at the back which locks the leg in the correct position it's a little bit of a struggle to get this in uh, after the main leg has been fitted I think Airfix would have you attach the strut to the leg and then the whole assembly in, but I did it this way. And there's a separate part of the retraction mechanism fitted a bit further inboard. So all in all, I think Airfix have done a nice job there. It's a, it's a nice undercarriage bay. I'm not sure that a resin would look that much better and probably would involve an awful lot more work. The wheels or the axles on the wheels are keyed and that's to ensure that you get the flat of the tyre onto the ground properly. The uh, propeller going together now A fairly straightforward assembly with the spinner back plate and propeller itself all pre painted. I'll weather this up a little bit later on. It goes together trouble free, and FX provide a, an interesting mechanism really. This plug section which contains the pin for the propeller and that just helps to ensure that you're not going to glue the whole thing up. For those of us that like to spin the propellers round when we've finished our models that uh, just helps us uh, ensure that that works. the exhausts on. These have had several colours on them. Some uh, exhaust colour, uh, some rust colour, bit of tan in there as well and a dry brushing with some rusty weathering pigment. This is the uh, beacon now in silver and here I'm just picking out the navigation light lenses or the covers and for this I'm using some Mr Hobby acrylic. I find it brush paints a little bit easier than Tamiya clear acrylics which I often find clump up a little bit particularly if you overwork them. But uh, the Mr Hobby goes on a lot more smoothly. Next up we've got the aerial to rig. I've drilled a little 0.3mm hole just behind the mast location and fitted a piece of van der Rosten fine rigging thread in there. Then the mast can go on 
and uh, we stretch that rigging up to the little triangle behind the mast. In reality the aerial was all one piece but I choose to do these in two sections. The section going up to the mast from the fuselage and then the one uh, from the mast over to the rudder post. The Van der Osten thread, which is an elastic thread, needs very little CA to bond to. Just a tiny spot will secure it. Then a sharp blade just to remove the excess. Just scuffing up that propeller now, this is a silver pencil which I just go along the leading edge of the prop with and uh, just as I said scuff that up a little bit. I also use it to pick out some marks on the fasteners around the cowling and uh, one or two other areas on the airframe but I don't overdo it. The photograph I took in this aircraft, you can see the marks around the cockpit entry. So uh, that was trying to replicate those a little bit. The lens for the beacon just pops in, there's no glue required for that, it's a push fit. This particular aircraft carried a rear view mirror on the uh, top of the windscreen there. And I just robbed one from an old Spitfire kit. It was the oblong type rather than the round type of rear view mirror. And the pitot tube. I later came back and repainted that. It's in sky at this point but I repainted it in aluminium. On with the canopy or the sliding hood. Airfix provide two types of hood, one for the closed position and one for the open which is slightly wider. And the last touch is just polishing the canopy and the landing light covers with a bit of Tamiya modelling wax. And the footstep these are the sort of parts that go on right at the end. They're bound to get knocked off if they go on any earlier. So there she is, all done. So uh, not the most straightforward build, but uh, it looks like a hurricane in the end. And I'm pretty pleased with it. So uh, that's it for part two of the ACES series. Uh, hope you'll join me for the next one. I'll be doing... Uh, Lilia Litviak's Yak 1 from the Academy kit. So I hope you can join me for that one. Uh, in the meantime, look after yourselves everybody. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.